In my last unboxing, I got to try a lot of these strange and interesting puzzles, but I didn't get to give them all the attention they deserve because there was so much to get through, including a few new good speed cubes. So today I'll go through each of these one by one and show you how they work and try to solve them by myself. Except for these two, these are basically just three by threes. So they turn and have pieces just like a three by three cube, except uh, this one is designed not to reverse corner cut. And this one's designed so that you can't use flick finger tricks because this thing gets in the way. There's the gear cube, which looks like a three by three, but when you start to turn it, everything starts to twist around. We also have different shapes for this, the gear barrel and the gear ball. I'm not totally sure, but I think these should be the same as the three by three. There's also the gear pyraminx, which should be easier than three by three, but it does kind of scare me as I'm not as good at pyraminx, so we'll see how this goes. There's also the ivy cube, which I have in keychain form, the coin tetrahedron, or what I like to call the illuminati pyraminx, it looks like a mini pyraminx, but then there's this wheel or coin on the inside that can turn as well. And of course we have the 1x2x3, and I'll start with this one. I'm not going to spend too much time on this one, I already solved it in the previous video, but the really interesting thing about this one is I wanted to see like how easy it is, because some puzzles you can just kind of turn randomly and it might solve itself. Or not necessarily solve itself, but at least make it so obvious what the next step is. Um, yeah, so this, I wouldn't say this is super obvious unless you know how to solve a 3x3, so I'm just going to keep going randomly. Okay, I couldn't solve it by turning randomly as fast as I thought I might, but that only took like 30 seconds. I haven't tried giving this to a beginner, but I suspect if you made them try and figure it out, it may actually take longer than if they just turned randomly until it was almost solved. Next we have the coin tetrahedron, and I'm just kind of going the order that I think will be from easiest to artist. This one looks really easy as we have four of these corners that just kind of move independently, and the wheel doesn't move too much at once. So this center doesn't move because it's just twisting, and these pieces, just the fact that they move around in a circle without affecting anything else makes it look like a really simple combination of turns you can do. All right, let's get this scrambled up. I'll turn the corners around and then I guess move each of these wheels a bit or coins, I should say. And then I will just keep turning the corners, um, do this a little bit more. All right, this looks pretty scrambled. So I think I'm just going to uh, go with a layer by layer approach. So I won't be making a layer the way you do on a pure minx because uh, all of these is like all the pieces and there's only one piece left. So I think I'll hold it upside down for my layer. So I will just, uh, let's see, let's start with, start with this one. So we got blue here. I want a green attached to this one and a yellow attached to this one. Probably twist this and get a yellow like that. All right, there's, there's my first layer. Okay, maybe a layer by layer approach isn't gonna work. I can just probably go like corner piece by corner piece. So I've solved this corner piece and I just need to solve this one, which pretty much just means getting like all these side two colors to match with each other. All right, I'll keep this on the bottom so I remember uh, what not to touch. So this needs a red. So I guess I'll just work on top here, give it a red. And this one needs a yellow, give it a yellow. And that piece is done. Let's solve it like that. On to the next piece. So this one, uh, let's see. So I can start by giving it the red right here. And this one stays red. Then uh, this one needs a yellow. I guess the only yellow left is this one. So I can, let's see, I'll move it on top. Well, uh, I can move it away and then preserve this red one so that when I turn this, Move it back. Now the red is back and the yellow is here. Yeah, that was pretty easy. Now this one's gonna be green. So, hmm. Oh, I can just take this green. So move this green over and this one's still green. And there's this piece. Now I have this piece left. So there's only one more piece. I can't turn any of the wheels without affecting anything else. Actually, this should be okay. So I think if I move this one down and just move it into the right spot, and then uh, blue here and green here. Wow, that, that worked. <laughs> so my thinking there was um, I had these three pieces left to go around the top corner and I was also only turning this wheel, which means the only other thing I could mess up in theory was these two. So all the pieces I was touching was like blue, red, green and two more blues. So if I somehow solved all of these, 
then the only two remaining pieces should be blue still here. So they shouldn't be able to be unsolved at the end. I mean, I didn't think it that far through, but that was just kind of my intuition from three by three because that sort of thing I feel like I've done before. Next is the IV keychain cube. And I've never actually solved an IV cube or really played with one, but looks like it pretty much just turns in half like a cube. And I don't know how to solve a cube, so this is probably gonna be a little bit weird. Okay, let me actually get rid of this keychain. All right, I actually don't know how I would start, but I do remember that when I made my own method for the cube like many, many years ago, uh, what I did was kind of making a layer first. I mean, that's kind of what I'm doing for everything. I even tried it for the coin uh, pyraminx, but that didn't really work out. So I guess this is my layer. I just moved three pieces to this corner. Uh, what do I have left? Okay, this is actually starting to remind me of the coin pyraminx because we have like a corner with three things around it. That was kind of a similar idea here where I solved corners with three around it, but these move more independently. So uh, this is still a little bit different, but maybe I can take a similar approach of solving one piece at a time. Actually, it looks like I just have a three corner twist. So I'll just use an alg from three by three. No, I'm just kidding, that's not even possible. But what if there was a way to twist each of these? Um, Let's see, so I just need to move these three colors around the corner, then I can like turn the corner. Yeah, yeah, so that's actually, could I just use the same idea as I used from the, the coin tetrahedron? So let's see, if I just solve these three pieces by only turning this side, well, we'll just give it a shot. So I'll move white out of the way and move white back up to its spot, which pushes out red, and then get red to its spot, which pushes out blue, and then get blue to its spot, which pushes green back into its original position. Um, that worked. Wow, that actually worked. Okay, so I just need to twist these two left. Um, I, I wonder if this is, a, is like a lucky solve that I just got these as two twisted corners, or I wonder if this is like a common thing that would happen with this puzzle. But yeah, I pretty much know I can solve this already, just need to do that again. Put yellow in, and there we go. So one more twisted corner. This actually looks funny. It, just from three by three, it feels like this should not be possible. But different puzzles, different rules. So just pretty much the same thing again. It's just this pattern of turning. There we go. Ivy cube is, as it turns out, pretty easy. Next is the gear cube. Okay, so I'm going to just start by figuring out how turning on this actually works. So last time I did discover that you have to uh, not just do quarter turns because like, so here on a three by three, you've moved the colors off by one, which is okay, but on a gear cube, it doesn't turn the same way. So it, that center piece, that used to be a center piece, is now where the edge is, so you can't turn along the other axes. So you have to actually do double turns like that. Um, which restricts the turning a lot. So it's gonna be, at least in one way, simpler than a three by three. Once you've done a double turn, the center's back in the middle and you can start turning along a different axis. And before we scramble, I wanna try one more thing. I remember from last video, one, two, three turns, yeah, and the edges get reoriented back to normal. That's good to know, and that's all the experimenting I'll be doing. Let's just start scrambling. I can think of a few ways I would want to start with this. Um, I could do all of the corners. So that's because uh, since it's a half turn only cube, then it's kind of like the way I would approach three by three. But the other thing I could do is also try to make it into cube shape first. That way I don't have to really deal with the orientation of the edges later. All right, I think I may actually be able to do both based on um, what I've tested with this earlier. Yeah, so I solved all of the corners now, which is really easy. Then. This part's mostly cube shape. Anything that's not, I think I can just like keep twisting. Yeah, there we go. I'll probably want the centers in the right spot. So there's white with, and there's yellow. These are wrong. Hmm, can I just keep twisting? Will they move? Oh well, yeah, solved all the centers. So this part's actually a little different than what I'm used to on just um, doing double moves on a three by three. When you just do double moves on a three by three, you'll notice that like everything is always two colors on one side. So all green, blue, all orange, red, all white, yellow. And if it's like this, then you can solve the rest using only double moves. And this doesn't really look like that. So these are not really um, the two colors on one side sort of thing. I probably want to get it into that way somehow if I can like make sure I can keep doing double moves later that preserve the orientation. Yeah, so three double moves preserves the orientation. So before I get to that, I need to figure out how to get these into a position where uh, they're 
all like green, blue, orange, red, white, yellow. Now, I don't know if that's gonna be easy or not, but um, I'm gonna try something. So these are good, these are good. So they all have like the two color property, but uh, everything along, let's say this slice isn't, and this slice isn't either. Okay, if I move all of these, now they're in a different orientation. I mean, that might help. Pretty much the only other move I have from here is like to move along this side or move along this side, which is kind of the same thing. It's just cutting through the layer I moved. So I'm gonna move like that. And I don't know, undo and undo. I'm not sure if that made progress. It looks like I have yellow touching here and so this is good. Uh, this is not, wait, if I could just like move this, move these center somewhere else by just turning a bit. Hmm. Oh, wait, did I, did I do it? Wow, <laughs> I'm gonna have to watch that back to see what exactly I did, but whatever I did happened to make all of the like two color property. I'm still not sure if this method will actually take me to the end, but let's see if I can continue. Um, I probably want the corners solved again. Uh, this is the two by two case where we have like uh, two sides both solved, but the corners are like diagonal. So I need to do R2, F2, R2, but uh, not confident in that because the edges, so I can do like the other way I'm doing double moves, which is like R2, R2, R2 to do a single R2, oops. And then uh, just basically triple moves instead of well, like three times the, the double move. And that should preserve cube shape. Did I solve the corners? Oh. Um, did I just mess everything up? Okay, I did some stuff where I managed to get sort of what I was going for, but the centers are wrong. And I don't know if that's gonna be a problem, but I made progress in the other part I wasn't able to, so I'm just going to continue. Um, so what I want from here is to solve the corners. I have these yellows and these yellows. So move this over um, two more times, so it's cube shape. And this one over here, like that. Uh, yeah, if I just move everything else around, eventually it gets back into this, yeah, this sort of idea. Okay, the centers are still wrong. Um, might be a problem later. What? What? I I wasn't even trying to solve the last step yet. I didn't, I actually just like stopped talking and started moving it around because I was like, okay, I messed up. I'm gonna get back to the part that I still was at. And then I'm gonna continue explaining what I'm thinking, but it just solved itself. This isn't the normal thing I like keep in a video because there was like no commentary and I just did something, but I don't know if I'm ready to like solve the whole thing again. You know what, we'll see how I'm feeling at the end. I'm gonna move on to the pure ranks. This one's got its own weirdness. We have like the center pieces and these outsides, um, you wanna turn it until the center piece is back, then you can continue turning, which makes the outside look like it's wrong now. But that's fine, we can still start turning. Oh no, okay. Let's just scramble it. I don't know if my lack of experience with pure minks, um, <laughs> my lack of experiments is going to cause me any problems with this one compared to the three by three. Not like I really figured out the three by three, but this just might be harder. I'm not sure about solving the corners this time. I think I'm just gonna try to get it back into a pyraminx shape. So I think it's probably similar to before where I can just um, turn the sides until the orientation's okay. I mean, that one's, no, it's not, cause that one's not, okay. Uh, Pretty much just gonna try and turn randomly here until the orientation's all right. Uh, this one doesn't look like it's gonna get there. Maybe I need to turn this one part way through. There's only so many orientations these things can have, right? So uh, I should be able to get it eventually. All right, this is shaping up to be much harder than I thought it would be. And even if I somehow successfully get it into the right shape, I don't know if that's even a good first step. Like maybe I should have just solved them one by one, like maybe in a layer by layer sort of method. But this, uh, this is quite challenging. But I'm gonna draw from my previous experience with a coin one where, uh, so I have three left to go. I probably wanna like move them in a cycle the way I did before. So uh, I'm gonna twist this one. This is the bad one. Okay, so I'm just gonna 
let's see, move this one in, and then get the other one over, twist this in a different way, I don't know, like that. And then maybe get this back up. Like at this point, it's kind of random what I'm doing, but it might work okay. I'm basically just cycling around the three pieces that needed to be twisted to see if it does anything. I'm trying to avoid thinking at this moment to see if this just happens to work out randomly. Um, got two more left to go. Okay, I'm very tired. I think I will have to give up on the gear pyramids for now. Like I really want to solve it, but I just realized there are these inner pieces as well and I tried to move them around and I could not really figure it out. I know that like any turn will move the inner center, and I think the outer centers are kind of stuck to uh, being around the same corner. Even though I've turned it a lot, I don't really feel like I know how this works right now. So maybe I'm just not in the right mindset to solve this, but I think I'm going to attempt it another time as I don't see myself solving this right now. All right, it's the next day. I didn't give up and I did manage to get really far, but something weird happened. I managed to get to this point, so only one edge a bit flipped. And um, I couldn't figure out how to solve this. I was able to solve like other edge flips. So I decided I'm just gonna scramble it again and see what happens if I get back to this point because maybe it's some kind of parody, I don't know. But after I scrambled it, sorry, I don't have footage of this because I wasn't recording. I was just trying to figure things out. After that, I couldn't even do the very first step I had to do. And there were some points where like I would make a turn and a big snap, like a loud snap happened. So I'm pretty sure some of the gears got misaligned and the puzzle just became unsolvable. So I took it apart reassembled it as solved, tried again, and the same thing happened. So I think this is happening quite often to the point where I don't think I can go through a full solve and be confident that it's still solvable by the end. So if I'm like almost done and I'm not completely sure that the puzzle is solvable, then it doesn't really feel worth it to continue. So I'm just gonna leave this here for now. I feel like I could have figured it out, but the hardware didn't really give me a chance. Overall, I was pretty satisfied I was able to figure these out as I normally do speed solving stuff and not too many of figuring out puzzles but every once in a while it is pretty fun. I've also tried to solve a square one before, so go check that out on the end screen if you're interested. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.